So in this video I'm going to talk about um, how to find x-intercepts of a function using your graphing calculator or a way it can aid you in your thought process. So the first step here is we, we have to understand how do you find them by hand. And a graphing calculator, um, or sorry, a, a function an x-intercept is found by what values make the numerator equal to zero. So therefore, um, to use the calculator, um, I'm going to just type in the numerator so x squared minus 1. Um, and now what I'm looking for when I hit graph, um, we know that x squared minus 1 is a parabola. So therefore, we know we're seeing everything we need to see. Uh, we're seeing the relevant areas. So now, though, we can, we can narrow our focus a little bit, um, especially because where we all we really care about is where the, the values are equal to zero, or the y values are equal to zero. So if you rearrange your window, so by pressing the window button, um, we can narrow in a little bit here and saying all I really care about is values that are very, very close to zero. So if I make my y values going from negative 0.01 to, po or negative 0 .01 to positive 0 0.01 and I hit graph, you'll notice it becomes much more obvious where the x-intercepts occurred. So just it's one one method and another thing we can do is narrow in our our x-axis as well to negative 2 maybe positive 2. So now it makes it, it clear as day. Um, so now what we can do is in our calculator um, we can have it actually calculate the x-intercepts for us. So do you see in the blue writing up above here in the in the graphing section of the calculator it says calculate so we'll go second calc and I want to find a, um, a zero. I want to find where I have a x-intercept. So now it's asking me for a left bound. So what I use is my my cursor to make sure my left bound is somewhere to the left of this value and notice I didn't see it ever pop up, but what I can do is use a little bit of logic. Notice my y values here are positive, and as I move to the left, they're getting more and more positive. So when I hit enter, notice the arrow that just popped up is showing me that my cursor is somewhere right around here. Now, what I can do, and I arrow move my cursor to the right, I may miss it, but what I'm watching for is my y values. I see my y values going down, and I know if I'm going to sandwich it, notice I never saw the cursor pass by, but notice my y values just went negative. So when I hit enter, notice the arrow is now on the right hand side of my x intercept. So now for the guess, I just move until I see my y values get somewhere very close to zero. I hit enter, and there we go. I have a zero at negative one, comma zero. So then similarly, we would do the same thing um, for the other side. So we go second, calculate go for a zero. Now for my left bound, I can move my cursor. Now notice the left side of this would be in the negative value, so I want my cursor to be in the negatives. Or I want my y values to be negatives. But what I'm watching for is I want them to start trending towards going up. There we go. So you can see as I now move my cursor to the right, my y values are getting less negative. They're moving more and more and more positive. So that was a little too far. So right here, do you see my x value is at 0.978 whatever, and my y values are still negative. So I hit enter, I am now on the left side of my x-intercept, I move my cursor one spot to the right, and notice we jumped up to positive y values. So now I know my x-intercept is somewhere in between there, I hit enter, and there we go. So what we can go ahead and do is fill in now on our, on our uh, table here, I know I have an x-intercept of uh, negative 1 comma 0 and a x-intercept of 1 comma 0. So now, how do you find y-intercepts? Well, y-intercepts are really simple. Um, in something like this, I would argue it makes absolutely no sense because the definition of a y-intercept is just let x equal 0. So we can very easily, very quickly see that this is just going to end up being f of 0 is equal to negative 1 divided by positive 1, so therefore I have a y-intercept of 0 comma negative 1. But if you had something that was a little more fancy, a little more special, let's just see how you do it in the calculator. Well, so step one is we have to type in our function. 
So we clear out our function. We're going to type in our new one. The one thing you always have to remember, people always forget, is when you are doing when you are doing things in the calculator, you need your implied parentheses. Make sure you put parentheses around your numerator and parentheses around your denominator. So when I type this in, I'm going to do parentheses of x squared minus 1, close my parentheses, divided by, open my parentheses, and now everything here, when I type it in, is just how it looks on the page. There we go. And we close parentheses. So now we can go to a standard window if we want. The real idea here is just we want to find a y-intercept. Now notice I can't really see it on here very well. Um, it's, it, it's somewhere in there. But what your calculator will do, if I go back to the calculate section, second, calculate, notice it says the first option is just a value. So if I select that, I select option one, it's saying type in an x value. So I can type in zero hit enter and it will tell me that point. When you substitute in zero, you get out negative one. So there you go. There's our y-intercept of zero, negative one. Um, so I hope this video helps. We The idea is covered here. We're just getting x-intercepts and y-intercepts.